I did have for you. Now here's a here's a conundrum. When does more time save time? In this case, let me turn on screen share. I selected just a handful of slides from each of the next four chapters. The digital filters chapter, which builds right on this information theory chapter. To bear with me, I think we can get through it in about 10 minutes, Max. We'll flip through it and then we'll take a short break and hand off to John. So here's slides that we were just on. 13, here's 14. Gee, if anybody thought talking to your people and talking to everybody else was tricky, then having tosses out the extra special case. Well, don't forget your boss. <laughs> you got to communicate to them too if you want to continue being effective and doing stuff. So to be effective and not become disgruntled, such as all of those contemporary engineers that Hammy had who said, well, it's such a mistake to move away from vacuum tubes. We can do so much more with them. He talked a handful of times through this lecture about why they were not preparing for the future. They were trying to force everything into what they know. And the relative trade-offs are more than just the strict things that you learn, but these other things are coming around because of their benefits. Slide five, Nyquist. This is pretty, pretty double E electrical engineering, but who, I imagine a lot of people don't know this. Nyquist theorem is fundamentally powerful. You guys are seeing this, right? Slide. It says for any regular signal, that has a information frequency of such and such, if you sample it at twice that frequency, not 10 times, not a hundred times, not a thousand times, if you only subsample it at twice that frequency, you can perfectly recreate the original signal. Wow, wow, that's like saying, If somebody listened to your sentence twice, they could tell exactly what you're thinking in every case. Maybe, I don't know. Reaching kind of far there. But Nyquist, very powerful. Okay, so I wanted to put that one in front of you. If you haven't studied Nyquist, please look at it. If somebody could put that in the uh, chat, that would probably be useful. Okay, now I'll go to slide 15. He goes into other... other uh, examples in detail, but this, this sentence is really powerful. It's an endless mistake to think that something new is just like the past. Now, to me, I, it, your mileage may vary. I don't, I don't look at a statement like this as a theory statement, as a pontification, as in my opinion, no, no, I, I, I take this. This is a statement coming from somebody who spent his entire career looking at how people succeed and how they fail. Not as some management consultant, but as a practitioner, he dedicated 10% of his week to thinking about that. And he says, not a common error, endless mistake. Hmm. Pretty strong wording. There are several occurrences in this lecture where he points out that all of this information was known. It's all sitting there. You know, math is self-evident if you know where to look or express it. But it took Gibbs paying attention to get somewhere. So here's his assertion, not opinion. Assertion meaning, please prove me wrong. But the opportunities all are all around. And it's up to you to grab them. Through there. The luck favors a prepared mind. It's not just probabilistic. It's you cannot take full advantage of your environment, which is full of these things. 
a hundred people could have did what Gibbs did, but it took Gibbs paying attention and saying, I want to do something about this. Also pointing out Cauchy and uh, contradictions. When you encounter a contradiction, oh, oh, isn't that interesting? It's not necessarily who's wrong, who's right, but it's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Why do we have this push-pull? Why do we have this trade-off? Can I gain insight out of it? And this diagram, in case, uh, you know, we're skipping over this, but the fine print is, oh, it's a rectangular pulse. That's this line right here, the 0 0.5, 0 0.5 probability, 0 to 0.5 on, off. Say if you do one sinusoid, you get that first curve. If you do three sinusoids in a Fourier series, you get the second. If you do five sinusoids, you get this. Uh, and uh, what's the moral of the story? You can get as close as you want to a square wave with sine waves. Is that intuitive? Maybe not. Is it powerful? Oh, my God. Because each one of those side waves just means, oh, we're going to a finer frequency, higher frequency closer attention to detail. Is this an analog to the modeling principle that, well, you can model anything. They're all wrong, but some are useful. If you can model to the fidelity that you need with some progressive refinement, you're in pretty good shape. Oh yeah, this is, this is just showing not only and you take advantage of that, but as your understanding refines from the original insights of information theory, oh look, we've got a we've got a cookbook here, we've got an algorithm, we've got a series of best practices wired in the order that lets you lather, rinse, repeat, and get better and better and better and better. Here's another good thing to pay attention that you may want to go back and read or listen to someday, uh, pointing out several instances in physics where they had no way to get inside that system, no way to figure it out. But once they were able to figure out what are the inputs and what are the outputs, then they could get to, oh, what is going on inside that black box? This is another exemplar that has many real world correspondences. And then final sampling. Slide 17, digital filters for, so yes, you can learn a lot about digital filters in here. This is where he finally doubles back more with some of the human side of these pretty technical questions. Yeah, since Hamming studied this, do you think he heard a lot of experts give their opinions over the years? I'm trying to sharpshoot, I'm just trying to listen and understand, here we go. And so this is, this is an experimental metric he's handing back to us, that he observed over and over that these so-called experts it might have been very expert, but they were riding that hobby horse onward and onward without saying, wait a minute, wait a minute, maybe my expertise here is limited or no longer relevant. He said, a human flaw that you could fall into, beware. And then give some stories. This one is about knowing the right person to ask, not just trying to do it all yourself. And then for the individuals who realized that we're re working on a core problem and that they would solve the root problem and not just the manifestation of the day, that they also push beyond that to say, somebody, others need to know about this. We need to communicate it. And indeed, it opens the door on other things. And I think this is Hamming giving another example of why did he write this book? 
Okay. So there's five chapters. Oh, that wasn't a long lecture. That was a short one, right? I'll try to get you guys on screen so I can see the, uh, maybe the camera can capture your, your mix of grimacing and grinning at the same time. All humor is pain. Okay. Any, any reactions, anybody? Okay, thanks for the link to uh, sampling and Nyquist. And let's take a five, 10 minute break and then uh, we'll do a quick round again if you have any thoughts and then we'll hand off to John. All right, see you in a minute. 